All right, guys, we're going to take a look at solving the uh, one-dimensional heat equation uh, subject to these boundary conditions and this initial condition. Just to give you guys a visual reference, uh, this is the one-dimensional bar of length L, and it is subject to this initial condition at this end. And this initial condition, I keep saying initial conditions, they're boundary conditions at this end. Um, notice that it doesn't matter what the time is. Uh, these boundary conditions do not change with time. Um, this is our initial condition, and it tells us what the heat distribution throughout the bar is at time is equal to zero. So initially, we might have heated this bar up uh, at this point and kept it cool here, and we want to model how the heat is going to flow or evolve over time. Or we might have put more heat here and heat here and want to know how the heat's going to uh, come into the middle. All that's going to be determined, how that heat is going to evolve and flow over time throughout the bar is going to be determined by this equation and these boundary conditions and initial condition. Okay, so let's look at solving this problem. I assume that u is equal to a function of x times a function of t. Uh, it's okay to make this assumption because if the assumption is incorrect, the math will tell us here in a few steps. Um, so let's go ahead and make this assumption and apply it to this uh, PDE here. And we're going to get x bar. Uh, partial t over partial t is equal to c squared par oops, t partial squared x bar over partial x squared. Okay, so now I was able to pull out uh, this x because it's not a function of t. Likewise, I can pull out this t because it's not a function of x. I divide by x bar t, I get 1 over t. Um, I'm going to actually change this to an ordinary derivative now because uh, I'll, well, I'll explain it here in a second. Okay, so um, I have over here only a function of time, and over here I have only a function of position. So this function here, as little t varies, this function is always equal to this function, even when x varies. Okay, the only way that that's possible is if both of these equations are equal to some constant b. Okay, so what this does is this actually gives me two uh, differential equations. Um, 1 over t, dt over dt is equal to b. And then c squared over x bar, d squared over dx is equal to b. Okay, so I have two different equations. Uh, this first equation is not dependent on x, so hence why I can switch this to an ordinary derivative uh, rather than a partial, different, uh, partial derivative. Um, okay, so here we have to look at two, uh, three cases of b. We have to look at b being uh, less than zero, b being equal to zero, and b being greater than zero. Okay, so let's look at the time component here. I get dt over dt is equal to bt. So I took this first equation and rearranged it to this. And uh, when I'll notice that when b is not zero, I get um, t is some constant times e to the bt. Okay, so now what happens when b is greater than zero? As time progresses, uh, this time component here blows up to infinity. Um, we don't ever see this happen in reality. This doesn't happen. Nothing ever blows up to infinite heat. And so we know that b cannot be greater than zero. Now if I look at the case where dt over dt is equal to zero. This tells us that the time component is equal to some constant. That doesn't happen either. So for example, if I heat up this pad 
to 100 degrees, and then 10 minutes later I come back, it's not 100 degrees. Time, the, the, the temperature changes over time. So, B does not equal zero. That leaves us with the only option that B is less than zero. So I'm going to go ahead and erase B here, and we're going to replace it with minus k squared, where k does not equal zero. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and erase that. Okay, so we have our time component is C naught e to the minus k squared t, and our uh, d squared x bar over dx squared is equal to the minus k squared over c squared x bar. Taking this equation, rearranging it. Okay, so we get x bar is equal to, um, let's do c1 sine of k over cx plus c2 cosine of k over cx. Okay, so uh, let's see here. We're at the point where we can now apply our uh, boundary conditions to the x component, to the x function, and we will get um, when I take the derivative, I'm going to get c1 k over c cosine of k over c x minus c2 k over c sine of k over c x and this is dx bar over dx okay so now uh, let's go ahead and apply uh, this first boundary condition that says that when x is zero this has to be equal to zero um, cosine of zero is one that tells us that C1 has to be equal to zero because sine of zero is zero. So this term has to always be zero. So we know that C1 is zero from that first boundary condition. Um, okay, so likewise here, we have to apply the second boundary condition. So when x is equal to L, we get inside the sine function, we have k over c times l. Um, and uh, let's see here, this term has to be zero when x is equal to l. And the only time that this term is equal to zero is when what's inside is equal to a multiple of pi. So we're going to set what's inside equal to a multiple of pi. Uh, if I divide by L now, if I divide by L, I get the value of what uh, the coefficient in front of X. Okay, so now um, let's go ahead and erase everything. I'm going to leave that term there. Let's just go ahead and write the equation. here. k over c is n pi. Okay. And uh, also, I'm going to divide, excuse me, multiply by c here. And we're going to replace k here with n pi c over l. And we can erase everything else. Okay, so now um, let's go ahead and write it. Let's use, let's uh, substitute these values into here. So we're going to have u of x t is um, 
let's just call it C3 for a second here, cosine of n pi x over L e to the minus n squared pi squared c squared over L squared times t. Uh, notice that um, this is true for every value of n. So for example, no matter what value of n I put in here, as, far, as long as it's an integer, I get um, uh, it satisfies this initial condition. And that tells us that for each term that has a different n, we have a different coefficient in front of that term. So we're going to symbolize that as Cn. Okay, so for each value of n, um, we get a different term, and we're going to take the superposition of all those terms, all those infinitely many terms, and that's going to give us our value, uh, or that's going to give us our function. So I really have to put a summation here, okay? Uh, let's see here. So now uh, we need to figure out what Cn is, okay? Um, and how we're going to do that is we're going to use our initial condition. When time is zero, I get a summation of Cn cosine of n pi x over L. So uh, initially, this is our, um, uh, heat, uh, our heat distribution, as this guy here. Uh, now, I'm actually going to rewrite this up here so I can get it out of the way. Okay, uh, so I can actually just go ahead and um, erase all of this here. Okay, so I'm actually going to um, kind of go backwards here a little bit. If I multiply f of x times cosine of m rather than n by x over L. Um, then I have to do the same on this side. So I get a summation of Cn cosine n pi x over L times cosine of m pi x over L. And so now what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to integrate both sides from 0 to L dx and uh, dx, okay? Now, what's interesting is that this term, uh, when m does not equal n, this is zero for every term. I'm not going to do the integration for you guys. Uh, that's something that you guys should do on your own, though. Uh, so this only has a value when n is equal to m. So what that does is it eliminates our summation sign. Okay, so... Um, we might as well change this to n and this over n. And so what we're going to get here is if we integrate this, we're just going to get Cn uh, L over 2. Okay, and that's something that you guys should do on your own. I'm not going to walk through that. Um, and so rearranging uh, this to solve for Cn, we're going to get Cn is equal to 2 over L 
times the integral from 0 to L of f of x cosine of n pi x over L dx. Okay, so this is actually true for all values of n except 0. So this is actually going to be our coefficient um, in our solution for all values of n except when uh, n is equal to 0. Starting here, when we're trying to find out what cn is, okay, when n is 0, we don't have any cosines in here. So all we're doing is we're integrating n, which is a constant. So rather than an L over 2, we just get an L. Okay, so when N is equal to 0, we get CNL is equal to the integral of F of X. Let me write that down. So the integral from 0 to L dx is equal to the integral from 0 to L of Cn dx. Oops, sorry, C0, C0. Okay, so this just gives us C0 times L. Okay, so C0 is just going to be this divided by L. Okay, so let's go ahead and just write this down up here. So we have Cn is equal to 2 over L times the integral from 0 to L of f of x cosine of n pi x over L dx n does not equal 0 and uh, let's see here so we get C naught is equal to um, 1 over L times the integral dx uh, and that is, so these guys here are the coefficient term for each, um, for each individual term in this summation. And because this is a linear uh, partial differential equation, we can sum up, we can take the superposition of all those terms, which is what we're doing. Um, and this all together tells us how the heat is going to dissipate throughout the one-dimensional bar.